Afternoon faithful viewer, I returned to you today looking incredibly pale uh, with a book haul. As promised what I'm going to do is I'm going to split the book haul into two videos. Uh, my reason for that is I just feel there's too many for one video and I'm always very cautious of taking too long to do these videos because uh, I know you're all very busy. So that being said, let's crack on. So the first book I've got to show you is Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. This is one of these um, Barnes & Noble sort of flexi editions. They're uh, very fancy. Um, and this is about, well I'm sure you know what this is about. This is about the mad scientist with a, a bit of a god complex who um, reaps, his, reaps what he sows, we shall say. Um, you should read this, by the way, if you're into sort of classics and you're into sort of horror, this this is fantastic. I was really impressed with this. So we have that. And moving on, I've got a YA for you. And that is Fence Striking Distance um, by Sarah Reese Brennan. Now this is a novelisation of the graphic novel series which I read called Fence. And it's about a young lad who gets a scholarship to a prestigious school uh, and in order to stay there he has to make the fencing team and it's just sort of that drama. Um, the graphic novel itself is quite enjoyable. I wish there were more editions but that's another, that's a rant for another video. Um, so I'm quite eager to get into this and see how it sort of measures up to the actual, the original um, graphic novel. So there we go, we have that. Moving on we've got another wee classy classic I suppose you could call it. That is The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo. Uh, this is a rather fancy felt edition. You can see the cathedral on the front there I hope. Um, rather funky and then you've got this on the back. I asked for this for Christmas. I didn't ask for this particular edition, I just asked for the novel. Um, so I was really impressed with this and I, I can't wait to get into that. I'm hoping to, it's going to actually probably going to be July or August before I can get to it if I'm being honest. Um, just with a few things going on at the moment. But yeah, classy. Moving on, I'll show you what I'm reading at the moment. Um, I have to be honest, my reading at the moment is not going too well. Um, I'm waiting on some results and it's sort of playing on my mind. Uh, so I'm only reading and, and work on my lunch break. Uh, and if you've got me on Twitter, you know how successful that tends to be. So we have Never Somewhere Else by Alex Gray. This is a detective novel uh, set in Glasgow in Scotland. It's the first of a series and it follows a detective who's hunting down a serial killer who's um, killing women and then dumping them in the various parks in Glasgow and he's sort of got to hunt them down. Um, it's quite enjoyable so far. I'm only about 100 pages in. But yeah, I'm liking it. So this might be a new one for me to kind of carry on with. Moving on, we have a gift from one of um, well, one of my subscribers, one of my wee pals, um, Tim. That is The Hearts Invisible Furies by John Boyne. I have read this. I thought it was fantastic. And this is going to be one of these novels that you're going to hear about all the time on here. But that's another story. Now this is set in Ireland. Uh, and it follows a woman who gets pregnant out of wedlock. And it's sort of what happens to her. And then ultimately what happens to the baby. Um, and it's... Heartbreaking but funny and really wonderful. So we have that. Moving on, we have uh, this wee one which um, was an impulse buy in a supermarket of all places. It's called The Authenticity Project by Claire Pulley. Um, I picked this up primarily because the, um, the cover um, attracted me and it's set in London and it follows... Um, well, it starts off as a wee man who has a book and he writes in the book essentially what is his truth, the fact that he's feeling isolated and left behind by society and lonely etc. And then the book gets left in a cafe, someone else picks it up, reads it, adds their story, someone else picks it up, someone else and reads it. Um, and it's all that sort of story. I am, I'm not describing it too well am I? I have read this, I thought it was excellent. Um, so yeah we have that. I'd be surprised if that didn't become a series just by the way it ended, but uh, who knows. Right, next up we have, we've got two more and then I'll let you go. Next up is another YA, this is a fantasy series. It's called The Stone of Destiny by Caroline Logan. Uh, like I say, it's fantasy and it's all sort of based on um, Scottish myths and legends. You've got things like Kelpies and that kind of thing and Selkies on it. Um, 
what can I say about this? I originally heard about this a few years ago. Um, every new year there's a supplement in one of the papers which tells you of all these authors and their work that's coming out to keep an eye on it. And I remember reading about this and thinking it sounded quite cool. And then it went to the back of my mind. And then I noticed that um, John Connor on here, Connor Stumpanato, read it and really rated it. So um, I got it again. I have read it. I do have thoughts. We'll leave them to another video. But um, if you're into YA, if you're into fantasy, if you're into like, sort of Scottish stuff, this might be something for you. There we go. Uh, if I'm talking too fast, I'll try and remember to do subtitles so you can have a wee read. Right, the last book I've got to show you is this rather cracking edition of... It's called Midwinter Murders by Agatha Christie. It's one of these hardback editions that I'm collecting. And it's all a load of these short stories with all our main sort of characters. You know, Poirot, um, Miss Marple, etc. Um, I've read a few of them. I've not read the whole thing, but I've read a few and it's quite good. On the back it says, Fireside Mysteries from the Queen of Crime, Deadly Snowdrifts and Dangerous Gifts, Poisoned Meals and Mysterious Guests. This new compendium of seasonal short stories features some of Agatha Christie's most famous detectives. It's perfect for reading in front of a crackling fire when the days are growing shorter and there's a chill in the air and murder is never far away. So there we go. I'm surprised I could read that without my glasses on, but there you are. So we have that. So that's everything just now. I will pop back on later in the week, hopefully with a better battery. And we can do part two. If you have any thoughts on any of the novels I've shown you, uh, if you've read any, or if you have any recommendations for me, if you just want to say hello, pop it down below. Um, don't let the face fool you. I am quite sociable. As always, thanks for watching. Here's she back. Bye-bye.